Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Kiryoku Writes. I am here with the Maybe Pile show with my co-host Tony. Tony, how are you doing today? Let the horn of Helm Hammerhead ring forth! I am <laughs> beyond pumped to be back and recording this show with you. Okay, I I am just awesome. I, I got back into my home after work today, and I'm just like, fuck yeah, another episode of Maybe Pile. Let's get back to it, man. Good, good. Now, uh, apologies to our viewers if or listeners. If uh, I don't seem a hundred percent because I'm not, I'm a little sick. I have, I think I might have a little bit of a sinus problem. So if I, sick. if I sound, if I sound a little weird, that's why. But regardless, I am really pumped, really happy to be back, fresh off of New Year's. Holidays are done, so we're just gonna get back to our regular schedule. Fingers crossed, <laughs> and uh, we're just gonna see what this new year brings. Uh, um, I mean, I'm ready to talk about everything that's going to be happening in the new year, everything that's been happening with us uh, previously between uh, episode four that uh, I still haven't gotten out yet as of recording, <laughs> but it's it's coming. I'm excited. I liked last episode. I'm feeling good about it, and I'm feeling good about this episode. So, uh, Kay, what, what, have, what has been going on in your life since uh, since we last spoke? Well, I've kind of just made a... I'm not going to call it a New Year's resolution. I don't have a problem with making those, but I'm not going to call it a New Year's resolution, but I've just... Sounds like you have a problem I, with uh, making New Year's resolutions. <laughs> well, you, my only problem is, is that I, I never keep them, but I'm going to try and keep this one, and so far I have. I've been trying to be less lazy. That is a problem of mine <laughs> I've had my whole life. I'm a lazy bastard, so I'm trying to not be that... And uh, one of the ways I'm doing that is uh, a friend of mine is opening up a, a gaming store and uh, stuff like that. It's like a pop culture shop. You know, like, you ever heard of FYE for your entertainment? Yeah, they used to be all over the place, uh, along with, like, uh, Sam Goody and uh, Suncoast Records and whatnot. Yeah, well, uh, basically he's opening up a store. I'm helping him with it. We're opening a store up that's basically going to sell what FYE sells. So I've been helping him out with that. And uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of crashed crashed there for a while. I didn't I didn't do anything. I didn't I didn't go out. I didn't help with anything. And I was just being a real real lazy bastard for a while. And uh, you know, we talked about it. And I was like, hey, I was like, hey man, I'm sorry. I haven't been really doing much with the store. And he's like, hey man, I just I just want you to try a little harder. He said, I'm not I'm not here to chew your ass out. I just want you to try a little harder. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I do need to try harder. So I, I, I went out there, like, three days later, because I was doing something else. So, like, three days later, I go out there. Like, 11 o'clock at night is when I finished. I'm just going out there. I'm, like, priming the walls, getting them ready to be painted. Uh -huh. And I've been I've been doing that for, like, the past week. Every day, out there, painting, priming, getting the place ready. So I've just been more dedicated than ever, and it feels really great. Yeah, man. I mean, especially with a, a task that's so that's more uh, creative and handsy when it comes to it. Like you can be like more active and doing stuff when it comes to a computer, and you can be like with me with like editing and whatnot and getting stuff out. And yeah, that's a good production feel. But I can't tell you how great it feels to actually be like working with actual physical stuff and being able to like craft and build and paint and sand and be and be you know like I said like crafty. Yeah, it really it really makes you feel good. It makes you feel accomplished. I I will say that when I you know after I finished priming and I'm looking at this basically a, a white room, but hey, <laughs> it's white because I painted it white or uh, primed it because we're using white primer. But hey, yeah, I a, made that happen. A bowl is most useful when it is empty. A canvas is most appreciated when it also is empty. Uh, hello. Uh, it it's a bastardization of uh uh oh well, I think an old Confucius <laughs> saying was the bowl oh, part. Really? Uh, but <clears throat> I guess you could adapt it to the uh, uh you know the white walls and being like ah yes a blank canvas on which to express my work and in your case yeah. uh, opening a store and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the only part of that room that's not white, mind you, is actually the ceiling because we took down all the ceiling tiles and we painted them green. Uh, so, like the drop down ceiling kind of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you know, how, like when you're walking around like an office building or a yeah, school, yeah. they have like those ceiling, those square ceiling tiles. Yeah, they kind of. That, like, that's what that's what we have. They're kind of porous looking, uh, almost like a sponge. Yeah, 
Yeah, a drop down ceiling. Yeah, we okay. I wasn't sure if that was what it was called. Or not. <laughs> yeah, we, we have we have one of those because the building actually used to be an old lawyer lawyer's office. Ah, yes, good. And uh, you know, so and for whatever reason, they're not there anymore. So we were like, "Hey, this building's been sitting empty for, according to our research, like four, five, maybe even longer years. Why not jump in there? Because the rent's good." And we'll see what else we can do with it. So there we go. Right, right, right. Of course. I, yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm excited for you. I I know that you, you seem to be the person that I've uh, that has the most like business ventures going forward. And honestly, uh, like that's really cool. I don't have a lot of friends who are uh, very like oh, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to go do this. A lot of them are like, hey, like myself. It's like, hey, I'm going to go start a podcast, or hey, I'm going to start you know making music, or hey, I'm going to start art or whatever the case is i'm gonna go be a vendor at a con i don't really have like, anybody that i know that's like yes this is my business that i'm working with and you know you while well, working with other people to get their started or working on your own adventures it's, that that's really cool that's really different and unique well i think a lot of people back down <clears throat> whenever they realize oh this could actually happen and then they get nervous because i'm just gonna say it gets real for them you know the the reality of the situation sets Shit in gets real. and then <laughs> exactly shit gets real and the shit of failure starts to smell so then they're like oh well if this fails what am i gonna do and then they get nervous and then they end up backing out and a lot of people <coughs> i've seen a lot of people i've seen back out of of a lot of good stuff and even i myself have backed out of a lot of amazing things and then i was just like no i have to stop doing that i've seen this happen firsthand over and over again I have to put a stop to it right now. So I started vending at cons. I started helping out with the store. I started writing my my books. I started, you know, I, I brought the idea of this podcast up with you. And now I have this stuff going. And it's a lot to keep up. But I, I have to do it because this is what I want to do. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, that's what kind of got me started with um, oh, on my previous podcast, uh, Euro C Sucks, is the fact that, you know, I was so tired of all these projects I had lined up. I, w I was uh, overthinking things. Well, not overthinking things, but like picturing too grand of ideas and uh, projects that just didn't, weren't, um, weren't uh, uh, attainable for myself. Like uh, cosplays that were way too big for me or uh, other things. And it was like, you know what? No, uh, my friends and I were joking around about a podcast. So I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make sure that this thing right here, I'm not going to pass on this because I'm tired of failing and I want to make sure that I do something with that. So that's why I whipped up emails and DVNR pages and Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts and whatnot. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, that was the thing that moving forward I was getting done. So, you know, it's, it's failure that feels bad, but using that failure to push you into something new is just beyond. I can't get enough of it. Totally agree with you. And you know what I love? I love it when, like, your friends sit around and they joke about something. They joke about starting stuff like that, or they say it. You, you know, it's like, you know, they don't really mean it, but they say they should start something. I love <clears throat> that look on their face when you come to them and you say, oh, I actually did it. I actually started this. I love that look in their face. Yeah, I mean... They're like, you actually did it? You're damn right I fucking did yeah, and you know, being able to sit, not necessarily uh, prove the naysayers, but like to sit there and I don't know, like say that, hey, well, it, I'm starting yeah. down this road. I'm starting this process. I said I wanted to do this, and I'm going to go do this. It's not proving to the naysayers. That's that's secondary. Primary is proving it to yourself. Exactly. And I don't care how cliche college graduation speech, whatever. I don't care how that sounds. <laughs> it's, just, it's the fucking truth, man. It's the fucking truth. It it is, and being able to you know you. It's what everyone always says. You have to do this for you. And, you know, if you make something and you feel good about it, great. But if you're able to prove to yourself, your biggest critic, that, yeah, you are able to do it, hell yeah. Oh, yes. God, Jesus. Ah, I'm so amped. I'm so amped right now. I, I love it whenever I see you. Other friends of mine, I love it when I see my friends amp because that means you can jump in and you can get whatever you want done. I love it. You know what I want to, uh, what I'm going to get, as soon as I get my words together, you know what I'm going to get done? I'm going to, what's that? I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to rock this podcast. We're going to, we're going to talk about what's going on and it's going to be the best episode yet. 
you know it. I think it already is. You know, I think it's I think it's gonna be great. Uh, I don't know what exactly we're gonna talk about, but uh, but you know, I guess I guess we could start with uh, how was your holiday, man? How how is that? How was your holiday? So um, I can't remember what uh, what day we last recorded on, but uh, it was sometime before December or just at the beginning of December that we recorded last, and uh, since then I have uh, moved into a new house. Ooh, hello. That yeah. sounds nice. Yeah, it's uh, quite nice. Me and my two of my buddies are now renting out a house uh, that a bu- so cool. that ironically another of one of my buddies actually owns, and it used to be his house. So I'm renting out his old house now, and he's off living somewhere else. Um, he he's been out of this house for a while, but the uh, they kicked out the previous tenant. They they gave a non renewal to their uh, previous tenant, so now they moved out okay. in November. And we moved in in December, so uh, it was it's pretty great. I you know I'm back on my own again, being able to you know spread my wings again uh, since coming back to from Seattle, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Good. The good. Uh, that's that's awesome. The only downside is that I am about uh, let's say 200 feet from a hospital, so. <laughs> Oh, I'm ass- lots of sirens, lots of traffic, I'm assuming. Uh, yes. So, um, if ever on one of these podcasts from the f- now to for- the foreseeable future, if you ever hear a, um, ambulance or something go by, uh, you know why, because I am literally a stone's throw from a hospital and I'm like, damn okay. it. <laughs> Actually, did an ambulance go by earlier in the podcast? When we first started this episode, maybe I don't know I'll because pop- I thought I heard a siren in the back, and I was like, "Is that is that on my end or on his end?" Because I live right next to a highway. Yeah, and uh, so I get a lot of noise as well. And I mean, it's not as quiet of a neighborhood as where I was living before. Uh, so, and since my desk is right up against the window now, uh, and the window is only like single pane, I think uh, we're probably going to get like loud trucks and whatnot going by as well that i'm like damn it <laughs> oh well it, sh- it shouldn't be it should be all right i'm I'm not too worried about it especially since i don't have to do the editing but anyway hey okay so- <laughs> there it is <laughs> <laughs> oh you know i appreciate you man you know i do one of these days you're gonna start paying me for this right <laughs> yes i am yes yes one of these di- hey as soon as i start getting a decent income so will you i promise. Hey, i got bills i got bills to pay okay i, I don't so know do if I. you know this or not but i just moved out and i got rent to pay <laughs> i got I, I i got shit to pay too everybody's got bills to pay i got i gotta pay i actually i have my cell phone bill sitting upstairs i need to pay that as soon as i as soon as i'm done recording i need to, uh, need to pay uh, that oh i don't want to think about it i don't want to think about it so, I guess my holiday wasn't too bad. Uh, my Christmas wasn't that bad at all. Thanksgiving was rocky. Thanksgiving yeah, you, was rocky. Was uh, Sylvester Stallone there? <laughs> I rock, no, I rock, boy, do I wish. No, unfortunately, uh, Mumsy was in the hospital. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, she had... Uh, and everything's fine. She's actually doing quite well, but I may as well explain what happened. So, apparently she had... Two massive, and I mean massive, blood clots, one in each lung. Ooh. And the one on her right was so big, it was actually putting stress on the right side of her heart. Ooh. And she was at risk of heart failure. So, what they did was, they gave her a TPA, which is a clot, with, it's basically a blood thinner but it's they call they call it at the hospital. I don't know if that's what they call it everywhere, but at this particular hospital, they call it a clot buster mm-hmm. because it's an extremely powerful blood thinner. They essentially threw Drano uh, down her veins and it's like, here, this will get clogged out. Did. Yeah, it apparently has like a three percent three percent chance of like death or something. Oof! Because it because what what could happen is it can cause brain bleed or internal bleeding in your organs, your brain. Oh yeah, stuff like that. And because you know it's it's a blood thinner, so it, yeah. you know, you know what's funny is they they call them blood thinners, but that's mm-hmm. actually not what they do at all. They're just they're not blood thinners. You can't make your blood physically thinner. It's an anticoagulant. Huh. Which is why when. You know how, like, a lot of old people are on uh-huh. blood thinners. So, uh-huh. have you ever noticed that if an old person bruises very easily 
or if they cut themselves somehow, uh-huh. they keep bleeding and they don't stop bleeding. Oh, uh, what is that also called? Being anemic, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about anemia or whatever. I'm not um, sure about that. Anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah, so basically she has to watch out for that now. Now, TPA, she's that's not something that you take on a regular basis. That was to get those massive clots out of there. Because normal blood thinner, what it does is it keeps new clots from forming, and it uh, keeps current clots from getting bigger. But it's not strong enough to bust those clots up. It's not strong enough to do that. Now, I'm not a doctor, or EMT, or anything like that, so don't take this as some type of weird medical advice. Just throw that warning out there right now. I'm not a professional. But this is from what I was told and what I interpret. So, they gave her that. And the TPA, she was only on it for like two hours. Like, it took two hours for the IV to drain. And like 24 to 48 hours for it to completely get out of her system. You know, whatever. And now she's on uh, traditional blood thinner. So, she's just got to watch out. Make sure she doesn't bruise easy. Make sure she doesn't cut herself. You know, stuff like that. So, she's just got to be careful for, for that stuff. But thankfully, she's doing really good right now. But uh, uh, the the blood clots in her lungs were causing a lot of problems. Shortness of breath was a big one. Uh, shortness of breath and uh, lightheadedness. Because what was happening was the blood clots were big enough to the point where they were actually blocking her arteries in her lungs. Meaning that the oxygen could not get through. So... That meant that her oxygen level was dropping. Now, a normal person, a healthy person's oxygen level is supposed to be at 99, and it's not really supposed to go anywhere. It's supposed to pretty much stay at 99, 98. It's not supposed to move. Yeah. Her oxygen level was all the way down to 66. Whew. That's when something called hypoxia sets in. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's I know when, all about that. You know, yeah. So your oxygen, your oxygen is not going to your to your uh, organs. So that means organ failure, brain damage, total shutdown. It's the same thing that happens to fighter pilots if they don't have uh, uh, their oxygen masks on. The uh, hypoxia sets in, and they uh, have a wild bunch of different uh, symptoms that they could experience, and they actually do testing for it in uh, uh, aer- aeronautics uh, training to figure out what are your exact symptoms because people will get like two or three of like the seven different symptoms or whatever one of which being uh increased aggression and when you're trying to get someone's oxygen mask on and they're showing aggression (laughs) no that's not good man no yeah so and you know what really sucks she was being stubborn so maybe that was a symptom oh dude yeah right she was being very stubborn and i was like mom it's 66 that's not good. Yeah, no. It's supposed to be a 99 and no lower. Yeah. She was like, well, let's see if it gets better. I'm like, mom, this isn't something, this isn't a cough. This isn't a cold. This isn't something that's going to get better. You need to go to the hospital. Right. And so I'm putting my foot down and she's like, okay, let's go. So I get her in the car and I'm driving and I get her in there. And as soon as they look at her oxygen level, they're like, holy Fuck. shit. <laughs> Not not literally, they're more professional than that, but that's pretty much what they said. They were like, yeah. wow. Because she sat like that for like three to four hours with that low of an oxygen level. Because she couldn't, she wouldn't go anywhere. Jeez. So that made me feel really guilty, because I was like, I know it's not good, but she won't let me take her anywhere. So, thankfully now she's perfectly fine. She's on the meds she's supposed to be on. Mm-hmm. And, uh... You know, like the blood thinners and stuff like that. So, thankfully, she's pretty good right now. The clots have all been dissolved. They did an ultrasound or whatever it was on her legs to make sure that new clots don't form. They didn't see anything, so they said it was clear. So, we're all good for now. All right. Well, that's that's always good to hear, man. I mean, I I, I worry about these things. I mean, I know that you mentioned a little bit of it. You, mess, you messaged me back and forth a little bit about the fact that your mom was sick and whatnot, but... I'm really glad that she's doing a lot better and that, you know, you're, yeah. everything's taken care of. That's, oof, that is a wild ride, especially on the holiday season, you know? Yeah, that was like, uh, yeah, it was like, but it was a few days, maybe a week before Christmas. You know, it was like between that, it was in that period between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And she actually was in the hospital 
during Thanksgiving because the it was the same symptoms. I think that was when the blood clots were starting to form, but they didn't catch them or something. So whatever. But you, you living next to a hospital to a hospital made me it made me think of that. Uh, yeah, right. And all my roommates agree that it's like, hey, we live this close. We are not calling an ambulance because that will be <laughs> one amazingly expensive, and two, we can just like drive there. I mean, like, hell no, I don't want to walk if I got to go to the hospital. But at the same time, I'm like, no, just. We, we leave the road, we turn, we go 50 feet, we turn again, we're out of hospital. Thankfully, my father is actually an EMT, so my, him and my family actually get ambulance rides for free. Oh, jeez Louise. That, that is an employee discount that you wish you never get to use. Thankfully, we have not yet, although I was tempted a couple of times. I was like, Mom, you want me to call the ambulance? Because she was short of breath and stuff like that, but she didn't want to, so I was like, all right, we're driving, but I'm driving, obviously. Jeez. So, uh, and fun fact, I actually used to be a ride-along on the ambulance for a period of about six months to a year, which is a <laughs> lot longer than you're supposed to be. But I, but I was in high school and I needed to get some, like, those work hours or whatever it was. Okay. Uh, they had, it was like student learning hours, so you had to do like 40 hours in your community or something to graduate. Okay. And I only did like a, I only did like a few hours every weekend. So I was I went to my dad who was an EMT at the time and still is now. I was like, hey, can I be a ride along to get my hours? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I ran with him for like six months. Huh. Maybe I don't remember service ever learning having... hours. That's what they were called. They were called service learning hours. I don't think I ever had to. Well, maybe it was because I was a part of the Boy Scouts of America at the time. Well, technically, yeah. I still am, but whatever. Uh, I think it might be because of that that I never had to worry about that. They're just like, oh, yeah, you're in Scouts, whatever. Yeah. Maybe? Uh, scouts, JROTC, stuff like that. That Actually, JROTC would have counted, but I didn't know that at the time. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, yeah. so I was right along in the ambulance, saw a lot of things, a lot of interesting things, a lot of scary things, a lot of bad things, a lot of good things. It was quite a time, that's for sure. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> It was. It really was. You see a lot of interesting things when you're on the ambulance. You see, you see a lot of lot of stuff. You see a lot of things, and I can definitely say it. It it really opened my eyes to like the world around me and stuff like that. You know, you can you can definitely say you've seen things. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, jeez, Louise. All right. I'm not a war vet, <laughs> but <laughs> I I have seen my fair share of odd stuff. Well, if you were, you wouldn't be talking about it. That's for damn sure. Or whatever that saying was. I was like... What was it? It's like, oh, if, if they were a war vet, they never talk about it. But if they did, they weren't really there or something like that. One of these fucking gatekeeping so, bullshit that, you know, yeah, yeah, some, hard army like people would say. Yeah, like, if, if, you, if they were there, then they don't talk about it. But if they talk about it, then they weren't actually there. Or some, something to that effect. Pr pretty much exactly rehashing what you just said. Right, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so... Uh, well, uh, other than, you know, me moving out, uh, I did get to spend a great deal of time with some family. Uh, my half sister came into town. It was great uh, getting to see her some more. Um, got to hang out with my family. No, Ferris, get out of here. I'm recording a podcast. Get out. <laughs> Silly cat. What? Uh, oh. no, now that I'm like moved in my, uh, desk that my computer is on is right at the foot of my bed. So my cat constantly is like, hey, 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 wh what about me? What about me? And I'm like, no, now is not cuddle time, Ferris. Now is <laughs> podcast time. It's only for like an hour and a half. <laughs> no, cuddle time is the entire time I'm sleeping. Oh, wait, are you talking about po the podcast? Podcast. Ah, oh, shit. That's oh, what I was geez. saying. I was like, podcast is only like an hour and a half, but cuddle time is like 24-7. <laughs> I love I love animals. I'm a huge animal lover, despite the fact I don't currently own any. Yeah. You fluffy bastard. <laughs> anyway, I'd love, uh, love to have a giant dog. Anyway, what you were saying? Uh, yeah, you know, just hang out with family, presents, food, family, all that jazz. Good. Uh, good, good, good. The, um... Oh, great. I pet him, so now he's wanting to be like, no, you petted me, so that means I get to hang out. No. Go. <laughs> ah, jeez. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, but, um, uh, movies. Movies, right. Um, what did I see? What have I seen? Uh, oh, right, I've actually seen a lot of movies. Um, so, uh, let's, let's run down the first one. So, my 
probably pick for like best movie of the year that I saw, or at least, you know, it's the freshest one in my mind. So it's the most like potent in my mind, I guess. It has got to be uh, the latest whodunit murder mystery, uh, Knives Out. Okay. Have you, have you heard about it? Yeah, I've heard about it. Uh, I'm not as much of a I'm not I'm not a film buff, so I haven't seen it. But yes, I have definitely heard of it. Yeah, and I don't even think like you have to really uh, worry about um, uh, being a giant film buff to like know about it. It's not like one of these indie films that come through. And it's like oh, it's a uh, it's a tour de force of uh, this actor's career. No, <laughs> shut up. This is actually like a really good movie. Like so, and I can't talk about it at all. Like that's what I hate about. Like, I hate. The one thing I hate about Murder Mysteries is the fact that I can't talk about anything that happens in it. I can't talk about a character, how I feel about them, how I thought I felt going in, because then it's like, oh, well, if he thought this one thing going in, but then he was wrong, then clearly what he thought wasn't the real thing that ended up being. So this definitely isn't going to happen. So that means this could happen, right? It, it's impossible to talk about these things. But all, all I can say about it is that every single fucking person in this goddamn movie so good. Uh, Daniel Craig is the investigator guy. Uh, um, uh, Jerry, Jimmy, Jamie Lee Dreyfus, Jamie Lee Dreyfus, whatever. Uh, the lady from Halloween and uh, Freaky Friday. She did such a good job in it. And it's just, just all these people in it are just so good. And it's like, I made this comparison before uh, about how Knives Out is almost like to the murder mystery genre as i'm almost hesitant to say it almost as cabin in the woods was to the uh horror genre and people who know cabin in the woods know how that movie subverts the horror genre in the most perfect way possible and i feel like i i can say that about knives out without giving giving away what makes knives out great you know what i mean okay so it's like there's subversion that's going on in Knives Out, but I can't say why. It It's just, oh my god, anybody who's listening to this right now, it's like, it, it might be a little bit too late to see it in theaters, and you don't necessarily have to see it in theaters. This is definitely, I rank it as a... Um, as a special movie night that you like, you sit down, you have some nice popcorn, you know, you make a moment of it. It's not quite, you know, watching American Dad on Hulu all night kind of night. It's a, no, I'm going to take the time to sit down and watch this movie, not let it play in the background, not doing something else while you're playing it, like actually just watching the movie, uh, kind of movie night. That's that's where I rank this at. Okay, then. It, it's just really good, and anybody who has a chance to go see it still in theaters, by the time this episode comes out, good. Do it. Go see it. If you can catch it on uh, Blu-ray or on Amazon, Alexa, whatever, just go for it, man. Very well said. <laughs> I don't really have much to add to that particular uh, thing. Just it, well said. it was it was long drawn out, and I didn't say anything other than you know go see this movie. I feel like that's the only thing I was actually able to say about it. But it's so fucking good. Well said. Well said, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, great. Ugh. Yeah, nose is all stuffed up still. Go, I need to go upstairs after I'm done recording this and uh, take some more of my sinus medication. I got some Sudafed upstairs I need to take. Uh, alas, poor K. I knew him well. <laughs> uh, it, it, it just sucks. It, it just stinks. That's all it is. Oh, well. Yeah. Like the um, one day, one day I need to record. Yeah, it, it always fucking happens. And, you know, there was that uh, cough I was getting over um back on the last episode that i still feel like i haven't really 100 percent gotten over i still feel like there's something there that i'm still like kind of choking on every day and i'm just like Ugh, get out of my head <laughs> and in my car you know what's uh what's good about today though is that my uh USB Wi-Fi adapter arrived in the mail just today, and I plugged it in just before I got on here to record. Nice. Yeah, my uh, I had like a I still have it here. Where is that little bastard? It's uh, here. It is my uh -huh. old one. My old one is a tiny little uh, Netgear uh, USB Wi-Fi adapter. The thing is about the size of a damn quarter, and uh, so I. This thing's busted, so I, I I guess I'll throw it away or whatever. 
and I now have this monstrosity sticking out of my uh, PC tower. It's a literal antenna that just plugs in. It's just a literal antenna that just plugs into a USB port. So my oh. computer looks really funny now with the antenna, but whatever. Oh, I totally have one of those. Uh, one of the oh, USB do? things. No, yeah. I posted, uh, what was it? I posted a picture of uh, one of my old phones that I still have. And I uh, took the uh, the TP, I have a TP-Link uh, USB uh, antenna Wi-Fi thing. And I plugged that into a USB Type A to um, USB Type C adapter. And then I plugged that into the bottom of my cell phone and I took a picture of it and posted it and said, uh, <laughs> what was it? Um, having cell phone connection problems? Try this one lucky tip. And you'll never have bad <laughs> cell phone coverage ever. And I'm like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever posted in my entire goddamn life. Uh, TP Link, that's actually exactly what I have. So that's the same thing that, or same brand of antenna that's jutting up out of my tower right now. Is it white? No, it's black. Damn it. Mine's white and black. Mine's uh, all all black, I believe. Yeah, it Dam- is. Damn it, Kay. You said you follow me on Twitter and that my shen- you're always seeing my shenanigans. Why don't you know about this? This is like the one thing of yours I have not seen. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Either that or it was long enough ago that I don't remember. I, I follow a lot of... Actually, no, I don't follow a lot of people on Twitter. <laughs> Good. I don't check it all that much. Nice. For some for some reason, my Twitter uh, puts your tweets first. I don't know why, but I'll I'll log on to my Twitter and I'll see like three day old tweets from you, and they're like mixed in with like three hour old tweets. And I'm like, why am I seeing tweets from both two to three hours ago and from three days ago just from Tony? <laughs> the vain side of me wants to leave it that way, but the practical side of me actually wants to tell you the solution on how to fix it. How do I do that anyway? Uh, all right, all right. You gotta open up the app. You're you're checking on your phone, right? Yeah, let me. Yeah, yeah I check on my phone. All right, so you go, you hit the home icon, and you're at like the very top of the thing. You should have your profile icon of your 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 dude sitting in the chair. Yeah. Uh, and then at the very top right, you should see that like little star looking thing, like starlight cutie mark. Uh huh. You tap that, and it's like you can change it to see latest tweets instead. Oh. Okay. Uh, right. yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll change it later. Okay, good. That means <laughs> one more hour of me still taking up the top part of your newsfeed. Yeah, I don't even use Twitter for that much anyway. I might not. I'll probably forget to change it just because I don't care. Twitter! <laughs> I just don't. It, it's just Twitter, so I, I just don't bother with it all that much. Nice. So, movies. I, I've Who said makes? that I've got I've got a wide list of them, and thank God I actually still have. I went through my list of uh, reviews that I've written recent uh, since then, and uh, uh, it was funny because like you remember way back on the first or second episode, we're like, oh, "Man, should we talk about the Star Wars trailer?" I don't know. I feel like we should talk about the Star Wars trailer. Oh, Star Wars have been talked to death. Nobody wants to hear us talk about Star Wars. Well, guess yeah. what? <laughs> we're going to talk about Star Wars. Okay. Ha- have you seen Star Wars? No, but I, would, I need to. Yeah. Um, honestly, a lot of people probably should see it, even if it technically is, in some people's mind, bad. Eh. So I'm not I'm not going to get into the spoilers of it. I'm not going to get into uh, major plot points. Um, all I can, all I want to say about the topic is the fact that uh, people are allowed to not like Star Wars. But I also feel oh, yes. that there there should be a allowed people should be allowed to also like Star Wars. I feel like there's a lot of people out there in the world who want to shit on Star Wars and they're perfectly fine to be able to do that. However, I didn't feel like it was that bad of a movie. So people should just as I respect people being able to hate on it and crap on it and make thousand videos on it of all, why this thing was bad, why this thing was bad, why this connection was bad, why this missed connection is bad. You know, I have some gripes about the movie as well. Uh, something that happens in the first act is the fact that Poe sits there and goes, oh, I never got you, the, I never got to tell you the chance to tell you, blah, and then like it's, uh, and then it's like, well, what were you going to tell me? What? The thing, you, you said you never got the chance to tell me. Oh, uh, 
don't talk to me. Uh, well, I'll tell you later. That later never happens. And I'm just like, that's the biggest fucking gripe I have about the entire goddamn movie is like the oh, fact that like, well, what was he going to tell her? So it's like, you know, it has its problems and it has some moments where it definitely could be fixed. However, I don't think that pe- I don't think people should shit on it as much as, you know, they are currently. But at the same time, we're now getting into this like three, three weeks after the fact. Well, not three weeks after the fact. What am I talking about? Two weeks? I don't know. Uh, somewhere around there. Time is so, relative. So, so time is a made up construct by humans to uh, segregate our days into whatever. Fuck it. I don't care. Whatever. It happened in the past. But the point is, I liked it a lot. If anybody cared to know my opinion, I thought it was okay. Cool. I thought it was an interesting step uh, forward. But then again, I was like, eh. It, was, it, it wasn't like amazing, but it wasn't bad. Right. That was a long way to say absolutely nothing again. Well, I mean, you got you got to put. Sorry, my nose is acting up again. Well, you got to cross what you liked about the movie, what you didn't like about the movie. So I think you're making your points get across just fine. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what's my word count? My word count on the review before I got interrupted was about eight hundred and thirty-two. So I'm just like, damn it! I actually got interrupted. I had to go. Uh, Someone was like, hey, uh, this thing needs your attention. And I'm like, well, shit. So yeah. I never got to finish it. It's okay. It happens. All right. <sighs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, I still need to see that. Uh, I don't know if it's... Is it still in theaters? It's still in theaters, oh, right? Probably. Somewhere. I wonder if I can get my uh, get my buddies to go with me or my dad or somebody. Because my dad's one of the old school Star Wars fans. Yeah, you told me, uh, as we've discussed in previous podcasts, that you and yeah. your father always go off and go do the thing. Yeah, yeah, go off and go do the thing, since he, you know, he's one of the old, old school ones. And uh, my buddies are fans of Star Wars as well, so we should go off and see that at some point as well. You should see it twice! Actually, I did one time, uh, nice. when it was uh, The Force Awakens. I saw The Force Awakens twice in the theaters, once with a friend and once with my old man. Because... Uh, at the time, my friend was being, he's not as bad, he's not nearly as bad anymore, but he was being a little bit of a douchebag at the time. So we went, we went and we saw the, we saw the uh, Force Awakens in the theater, and he kept talking throughout the entire thing. I'm surprised they didn't throw us out. And uh, oh. he kept making, like, all these crappy jokes, and I'm like, dude, we're here to watch a movie, and we're paying to watch a movie, so just shut up and watch the damn movie. Right. But uh, he just wouldn't stop, so the movie experience was like really, really ruined for me, which sucked. And then I went and I, uh, I saw it with my dad, mm. and it was like a totally different. It was almost as if I watched a totally different film. Not ah, Jesus, Louise. He must have yeah. been a real asshole. Oh yeah, he he was. Thankfully, he's he's not as bad as he was. But yeah, he, he was a real asshole. It was like watching a totally different film. I was like, oh, I didn't see that part. I didn't know that. I didn't see. Was that there the first time? You know, it was, it was insane. Jeez Louise. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's like, yeah. Babies, and cell phones, and talking during the movie. Just fuck off with all of that. Why would you bring an infant to a movie theater? They're I, not going re- to remember? I went to a midnight screening of the movie Salt. I've already talked about this, haven't I? Uh, I can't, anyway, a bridge version. I went to a midnight movie, a midnight premiere of the movie Salt. The rated R uh, Angelina Jolie spy sleeper cell thing. And uh, in the middle of it, someone's baby started crying. I'm like, who the fuck? Br- One, rated our movie. Two, midnight premiere. Why are you? Fuck off. <laughs> uh, why? Why would you yeah. do something so stupid? Yeah. So I, I'm right in there with you. It's like, no, shut up. Turn your phone off. Leave your kids at home. Yeah. If definitely. you can't leave your kids at home, don't go to the fucking movie. I'm sorry. I I probably, you know, am offending the parents in the audience but when i have a kid and i know that they can't you know shut up for more than two hours or they are keen to burst into tears at whatever thing that babies do i'm going to not go to the movies with them i know that i'm going to have to make that sacrifice when i have a kid is that there will be a period of time that either i have to pay for a babysitter or i just won't be able to go see the movie sacrifices people come on down pat got it I don't plan on procreating, but I guess that's what a lot of parents say. God damn it, Kay. What? Could you say that in a more awkward way, please? I don't plan on procreating. Jesus Christ, my dude. 
What do you want me to say? I don't plan on having <laughs> kids. <laughs> the fact that my the fact that my nose is uh, plugged up probably doesn't make my voice sound any better. Probably makes oh. it probably makes me sound a little more snobbish than I already am, but that's okay. <laughs> It's okay. I, I blame it on your rich uh, New England uh, mentality. You and your uh, plantations, the farm that you live on. I fucking wish. And that I employing would. nothing but the Amish to attend the fields and cut the hay. We do. We do. We do pay a gardener. We do have a gardener. We, we pay a gardener every week to come and mow our yard. Uh, okay. Wait. Wait. Are they a gardener or are they a landscaper? Uh, I don't know. We just throw money at him, and he does. The, and he does the thing. Okay, because which sounds uh, like the stupidest, richest person thing to do, but we're not wealthy anyway. Well, to be fair, like <laughs> my parents had a well. Uh, never. That's not a good point. Um, a lot of people have like. Uh, no, that's me. Fla- that's that's me. Uh, flaunting my privilege. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. I can't call you out on this there, Kay, because uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure uh, my family did as well. <laughs> it's okay. We, they didn't start doing that until maybe until maybe like three years ago, maybe four years ago, they started paying him. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, well, mom's... What, he was doing it for now. free She's... all this time? No, they were doing it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, he comes over, he just likes doing it, and then three years later they're like, oh yeah, we might as well pay this guy since he's doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, mom's in her 60s now, and she doesn't want to do it anymore, since so she's afraid she'll hurt herself, and dad, he, he works constantly, and I work constantly too, you know, at the store, and when I had a when I had my old crappy regular job, I was there constantly also. So we didn't have time to do it. Now, we don't have an HOA, thank the Lord. We don't have an HOA, but we still want our yard to look nice. So we found this guy, reasonable wages, and we're like, hey, will you, will you mow our yard every week for this for this amount of money? And he's like, yeah, sure, of course, which is will just add you to my list of clients. So he just comes, and he, he'll trim the hedges, and he'll uh, mow the yard, and so on and so forth. Weed eed, you know, or weed whack, whatever you call it. Great. He do, and he does it really well. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing uh, for my parents' place. I mean, they do have an HOA, which I guess it's fine. I mean, they're not like Nazis. It's not like, you know. They're not like, like the uh, stereotypical ones. You're, they're not the ones I mean, that uh, YouTubers always have to make videos about. I mean, they they might be, and we just all might be in agreement with how they run because we're able to like be like, no, that's, that's smart. But like, I don't know. I mean, I, I bet if you picked up this HOA and went and like, plate uh, plopped it down in like where i'm living now oh yeah everybody would be pissed and everybody would be like oh why does uh they're, they're telling me i can't leave my car out in the street for five days in a row well yeah how about you don't leave your car out on the street for five days in a row well they say i can't leave my trash cans in view of the street well you know maybe you should put them in the back you know just behind the gate you know clean it up a little bit not Nobody wants to see your cardboard sticking out of your recycling bin. Oh, they say I have to move my lawn and get rid of all the grass, get rid of the weeds. Maybe you should take pride in your lawn. Maybe, you know, do something about that. Oh, they can't say I sit. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like nobody, everybody in my, in my parents' neighborhood probably all agrees on how bet, how a house should look and how everything should be maintained that, you know, the HOA doesn't even have to really do much or enforce much of anything, you know, other than. I don't know. It's three. It's two or four weeks past Christmas. Uh, Christmas, take your lights down, kind of thing. I I don't know. I, I don't know. I've never really got involved with with HOA. Of course, since I'm not around one, I live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but, you know. There's nobody. Here's the thing. There's nobody around me to care. <laughs> there's oh, nobody God. around me to bitch about if my grass is too tall. I mean, the, what? What are they? Are the people that are, that are passing on the highway going to call the town hall and complain that this person's grass is too too tall or some shit? Egad, the house out by mile marker two forty eight is uh, just <laughs> unsightly with grass. Uh, Harold, man. call the HOA. Oh, uh, don't worry, honey. I shall call the HOA. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know, but uh, it's whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, we got to we have the gardener, we got the Amish that do our work for us, whatever. <laughs> we, we got all that stuff. <laughs> in the middle of fucking nowhere. I love. I can we talk about like the dumb titles I've been giving the episodes? 
I saw Amish Fortnite dances. That was something. <laughs> I was like, and I don't care. I like that title. I actually really like that title. <laughs> I'm like, it's attention-grabbing, for sure. I would love to see an Amishman doing the orange justice. Uh, yes, let me toot my own horn here for a second. Yes, bask me in the glory. Oh, God. Uh, every time I see that, I just picture some Amish, just like fucking Jebediah over there with like his three-foot-long beard just doing the orange justice emote. Yes. There's gotta I be like... This. There's gotta be like the, uh, uh, an outfit for that in Fortnite somewhere. It's too lazy to look up. I don't care, but I'm not talking about Fortnite. I don't want to talk about Fortnite. No. (laughs) We're not allowed to talk about Fortnite. We talked like two episodes straight about Fortnite. I'm fucking done with it. Yeah, we did. You know what I do want to talk about, though? What's that? Movies! So, I also, on the break, I was able to see the uh, movie Bombshell, which was a movie based off the uh, sexual harassment lawsuit uh, plagued against... um, Let me uh, pull up my notes here from the thing uh it was a an american drama film directed by ray j roach and written by charles randolph the film uh, stars charlie theron nicole kidman and mark o robbie based upon the accounts of several women at fox news who set out to expose ceo roger a list for sexual harassment and boy howdy it was so fucking good like really? the makeup department on this thing so like the the whole kick about this thing is the fact that um or at least the thing that really caught my attention is the fact that um charlie Theron uh is set to play um is supposed to portray uh fuck what uh, shit it was uh god where was it R- R- rupert murdoch um Fuck. <laughs> long silence, long um, silence, long silence. Hold on, silence. hold on. Fuck! Uh, Frantically searches Google. Oh, what did she fucking do? Oh, Megan Kelly. Uh, so yeah, it it was um it was amazing for me because like the the makeup department does such a good job dressing uh, Charlie Theron as uh, Megan Kelly as well as a bunch of other actors. Uh, in it, uh, John, uh, Jonathan, Lit- Jonathan Litko, John Leguizamo, who was the guy that played Farquaad in, um, Shrek? Jonathan Litko? Yeah. No I, you, I don't or wanna... do you actually know the name? No, no, no. I, it, I'm going to go with, uh, Jonathan Litko and, um, uh, John sorry. Lithgow, anyway. Yeah. yeah. John Litko as, um, thank you, Google. As the CEO that was under investigation, Roger Ailis. And he does such a great job in it as well, like, portraying this person. Everyone in it is just so amazing. And, like, the people within the movie itself that are based off of, or the actors that are based off of real characters. uh, Because Margot Robbie's character, as well as Kate McKinnon's character, are fictional characters uh, placed within this world that they're writing. And uh, they're... um, uh, their portrayal, the the real characters, like the real people who are being portrayed by the actors, did such a great job. And it's such a, a, a rich world that like, not rich world, but like a, a, a amazing performance that they put off uh, portraying these people. And the makeup and the acting and everything uh, behind it is just so great because it's weird because uh, Charlize, I loved her. In, the first thing that really like clicked my attention for her was her portrayal of... Uh, uh, Furiosa in Mad Max Fury Road. I'm like, holy shit, this woman is an ass kicker. And sort of that boiled over as well over into Atomic Blonde that also has Charlie Theron as the main female character in that show who is a British spy in uh, the 70s and Berlin Wall and blah 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 yada yada. Blue Eiffel's playing I mean in the 80s I mean, 80s. That's when the Cold War and whatever. Anyway, um she's an ass kicker in that. I'm like, damn, this girl's really hard. And then like you, uh, after I saw that, I was looking back at all the movies that I knew she was in and I'm like, Oh, Hey, yeah, she's been in all these great movies. She's actually a really great actor or actress. Uh, and then seeing her in this, I'm just like, God damn. It's like, 
I'm not sitting there rooting for uh, Charlie Saron anymore. I'm rooting for fucking Megyn Kelly. I'm, well, not rooting, but I'm like, I, I'm invested into Megyn Kelly's story, not the actress playing Megyn Kelly. It's like, I want to know what happens next for the character. And I'm not like, as opposed to Margot Robbie and um, Kate McKinnon's character, that they're, I'm like, okay, what's Margot going to be doing now? Oh, yeah, Kate McKinnon. Oh, she made a funny line there. That's really good. And it's such a, I, I was more interested in what those actors were doing versus the real people. And it, it's, okay. it's really interesting how, uh, when they base it off of a real person, I'm invested in the real person. When it is a fictitious character, I am sort of rooting for the, the actor playing this because I have, I, even after watching the movie, I had no, I couldn't remember what Margot Robbie's character's name was or what Kate McKinnon's character was. But after the movie, I definitely knew about uh, Megyn Kelly and the other lady that was bringing the um, her sexual harassment claim to uh, to to flourish and, and like to bear and whatnot, making it real. And okay, it's, just, it's such a good movie. It's not. It's definitely not what we normally talk about here. It's not the uh, well. We don't really talk about anything here. We kind of talk about everything. But exactly. Uh, we it, it's it's not your sci-fi action flick. It's not your uh, uh, comedy uh, film uh, uh, that's laugh out loud. There are points in this movie that I haven't been so like squeamish about in like a long time. There's really? yeah, like so this whole movie is talking about um, uh, sexual harassment and uh, the claims made by these women against uh, Roger Ailis. Uh, back in 2016, I wanted to say, like the movie opens right at the, I think it was like the first or second, uh, presidential debate happened, uh, for the primaries leading up to the 2016 election. Uh, you know, the infamous, uh, point where, uh, Megyn Kelly was the moderator for the Republican, uh, debate where, uh, Trump, uh, famously tweeted out, or not tweeted out, but commented on on an interview that Megyn Kelly had uh, blood in her eyes and blood in, well, other places. You know, that fucking line that, you know, has been prevalent in this uh, um, in this presidency and whatnot. I don't want to go into it, but it it's like, it starts hard in right at her getting ready for that uh, debate, and her being like, yes, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask the, the real questions, and then the fallout after that and then this and then that and then everything that then led to um oh god what was it um i don't know the the main lady i I, when i saw the movie i was very much like ah yes this character and this woman but now i'm uh uh gretchen carlson was it yeah gretchen carlson i think was the was the um was the other uh was the lady that was bringing this lawsuit uh up and it was like, okay, yeah, this is very interesting how um, they also bring up the fact that Gretchen, was it Gretchen? I don't know. She was one of the two people at the very beginning uh, on another Fox morning show. And she was uh, listing all these points off why um, she had to leave this morning show because uh, the two guys that she's with were just absolutely extremely sexist bucks. Like talking about her dress, talking about how great she looks, or, and like you know, it, it for the record, it's okay to say that someone is looks great, uh, something someone has an active control over looks great on them, or look, looks great about, or they did well. Like it's like, oh, I love what you did with your hair today. It looks really great. Okay, that was an active effort they had to do, uh, versus something that just comes passively to most people, uh, or something that like you know, it's like. Hey, that's a nice shirt. Okay. Hey, I like how you look in that shirt. Not okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And like, they would make these comments that are just so like, like fucking not okay to say to people. You know, it's like, it's not like, oh, well, it was a matter of the time. No, this was like six years ago. We're not talking about how like, oh yeah, blackface was okay back in like the, in the, in the forties because, you know, that was just of the time. No, it happened like the other fuck. The other fucking day, you know? And so, like, right. they're starting to present, like, her case and whatnot and how By she's going to go after this. By the way, I just want to, real quick, sorry to interrupt, I just want to interject. I would be saying more, but my nose is, like, 100% clogged, so I'm just going to let you roll for a minute. 
it, it and that's fine because this movie was so fucking great. I can go on. I can just go on forever. Like <laughs> I wrote, I actually was able to uh, sit down for an hour and write a review for this, and I got up to eighteen hundred words uh, wow. on, uh, on a review of this movie. And I'm like, okay, I kind of have something here. I might tweak it and clean it up a little bit, but it, it it's there. It's a movie that's actually making me feel things. So it's that's not only the fact that like. Uh, you know, it's it, the the uh, points that she's bringing up are weird. But then uh, Margot Robbie's character is, I can't remember. She She's leaving Gretchen uh, Gretchen's show, uh, Gretchen Carlson's uh, show, and decides to go work on, not O'Reilly, um, not Bill O'Reilly, but the other guy, the other big Fox News. I don't know, whatever. They're the other big Fox News guy. That's not um, the guy that was going blind that left. Uh, what's his fuck? Anyway, she leaves Gretchen Carlson's show to go work on another male actor's, a male uh, presenter's show. And Gretchen's like, no, like stay here with me. I can protect you. And then she's like, no, I'm going to go work over here because, you know, I want to further my career and blah, blah, blah. You know, trying to be aspirational. Right. And so it's like, all right, fine, whatever. Get out of here. Uh and she goes over there and then eventually she like tries to kind of work her way into uh, getting into the office of the um, uh, Roger Ailis and uh, be like, hey, Roger, hi, this is I'm so and so blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. And it's like um, she she ends up going on like an elevator or whatever. And this might be a little bit of spoilers considering this is a fictitious uh, character interacting with a real character or a real person's uh, portrayal so it is a little bit like oh jesus dies at the end of the passion of the christ well no fuck everybody knows that but the idea that um she she goes up she eventually finds her way in his office and is kind of like talking about how much she loves fox and blah 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 and she wants to do everything she can for the company and at one and um he's kind of like okay, well, let's take a look at you. Uh, why don't you go ahead and stand up? And then she's like, okay. And like how she looks when she like presents, like, if she was to be presenting on a television show or whatever. And yeah. he's like, okay, well, give me a turn. And she's like, what? And he's like, it, it's a visual medium. We kind of have to do this. It's just how, how you look from all angles sort of deal, not just necessarily your front. And she's like, okay, I guess. Sure. She does a turn for him. And it's like, eh, that's kind of awkward or whatever. And then he's like, okay, Let's see a little bit of leg. And it's at that point, like, you see in Margot Robbie's face, just like, okay. <laughs> um, I you know, like, she's not, her, her, her voice isn't, um, uh, deviating at all. Like, this right. is me just obviously playing it up, like, what she looks like in her eyes. And you, like, see this, uh, moment of her being like, oh, fuck. Right. And then, um, like, but she's playing it off. She's like, okay, well, her skirt's like, you know, or the dress she's wearing is kind of like down to just above her knees. And it's like, it's fine. It's okay, great, whatever. She's a nice Catholic girl, whatever. And then she like kind of lifts it up a little bit, like an inch or two. And then he's like, yeah, a little, come on, a little bit more. And then she's like, okay, and it's a little bit more. And he's like, keep going. And she's like, okay um and then he's like he's like almost like sweating at this point and like a little bit like a little more kind of moment and it's just like it's so like oh like i want to like rip my like my soul wants to like evacuate my body at this moment (laughs) to the point and it gets to the point where she actually does like show a little bit, bit of panty and it's at that point that i'm just like Oh, like my body is just like my soul is like rocketing out of this dimension. I'm just like, oh, get me out of here. I oh, I just hate it. I'm just like, ew. Oh, this fucker. Yeah, God. I never understood. I mean, I guess in some ways it's important, but I never liked how filmmakers try to make the audience sit through those uncomfortable scenes. I hate it. Oh, but it 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 was so important, like for the story, like the movie. I get it. For the real life person, fuck him. Fuck him. I hate this guy. I hate what he's doing. I hate what he's all about. He got what he fucking deserved. Granted, by the way, spoiler, he does get, um, he, how, what was it? The 
Fox News, in the end, um, settled out of court and paid out, what was it, $50 million to the total of ever was it 50 million or 50 billion i can't remember it was it was 50 something it was 50 million dollars to towards the uh people coming forward about sexual assault allegations towards them that was also include that was not only limited to roger alice but also bill o'reilly and i want to say something else i think it was also technically um fox in general um roger alice was fired Bill O'Reilly was fired. They paid out $50 million to the victims of this crime or of the sexual harassment suit out of court. And they kind of settled this. They paid $50 million to them, paid out $65 million to Roger Ailis and Bill O'Reilly. Huh? So who's the real, who, who's the real victim here? Who is Fox news actually, you know, playing who is Fox news actually protecting the situation it's a corporate card game man it's like oh my god this movie is so like you gotta see it you gotta see it they use actual real testimony from like six other women who are not in the movie about their experience with roger alice and whatnot and oh my god it it's just really fucking good like i know that like I pretty much said the same thing about Knives Out being like, oh, you just have to go see it. But this movie, it it's another one of those, like, take a moment, go, like, make this your next movie night as well. Like, make a movie night for Knives Out. Go make another movie night for um, uh, Bombshell, uh, starring uh, Charlie Sarah and Nicole Kidman and Margot Robbie. And just just go for it. it it's so, They were just so good. I don't, I don't really have much of a comment. <laughs> Oh man! I mean, if if you have the opportunity, uh, Kay, you you really should. Nice. All right. Yeah, I may as well may as well have a look at it. Why not? Yeah. And I don't know if it was just the fact that like I saw Knives Out like two weeks before Star Wars, and Star Wars was kind of a letdown. It was still not terrible, but then Star Wars put me in a mindset of being like, eh, all right, whatever. But then Bombshell comes around, and I'm just like, whoo! All right. Let's let's get back into this, and then this Good. weekend I get to go see uh, 1917, the the that new war movie that's coming out, and I'm just like, <sighs> I'm excited about that too. I'm I'm Good. just there's such there's good movies coming out, and I'm just like, oh, I'm so amped. Nice, nice. I've noticed that. Uh, speaking of uh, World War One, and speaking of new things coming out, I see Sabaton's uh, still releasing some good songs about World War One. Yeah, they're uh, they're getting new albums coming out, and yes, they're uh, jamming on it. And I'm like, all right, get it on, guys! Absolutely falling in love with their music all over again. It's great. I see uh, Ozzy Osbourne isn't doing so hot on the other end of the music spectrum. I haven't heard anything about this. What what's going on with the old Ozman? Uh, apparently, he doesn't recognize his wife anymore. Oof! Apparently, apparently, I mean. In a statement from Sharon, if I if I got this right, uh, he just lays in bed and moans all day, and uh, he didn't even recognize her when she was in the room with him. So hopefully, hopefully he, hopefully something happens and he he somehow manages to get a little better from where he is. It was really weird. The source I get all my news from, one of them, he put up a video saying that yeah he's not doing very well. And then the next video he puts up saying he's collaborating with Elton John. And I'm like, that's great, <laughs> but what happened to all the health issues? Get your content straight, buddy. Yeah, it's uh Like is he not doing very well? Is he has he recovered? That's a pretty miraculous recovery. Apparently there's also a new music video involving Ozzy, and I'm just like Yeah, he put okay. out what is it called Straight to Hell or something? Yeah, I'm I'm seeing that now and I'm just like, oof. I was I googled it just like looking to see you know if I could get any more information about this whole like uh, him in declining health and whatnot. But I'm just at the same time I'm like uh, okay. I mean, how factual I, was that? I don't know. Maybe not very. I'm not sure. I hope it oh. wasn't factual. I, this is one of the instances I would like to be wrong because I'm a big fan of Ozzy Osbourne and I don't want him to be in that bad of a state. 
Oh. Um, so, hopefully that's all. <laughs> page two of a Google News search resp- uh, uh, produced a Snopes.com report. So, get ready for this one. Um, is Ozzy Osbourne on his deathbed? His family has responded to reports about the singer's health. Um, the claims, uh, Osborne on his deathbed, claims lead singer of the Black Sabbath group, chronic pain spacing all day in bed, couldn't recognize his wife. This has been reported as false. Oh, thank God. Uh, this article was not based on any medical reports or first-hand knowledge from the singer's family. Rather, it relied on anecdotal information from anonymous insider. Oh, quotes. fuck that. Ozzy Osbourne's daughter, on the other hand, directly refuted this report. Ozzy did have some medical issues in 2019 after a fall in his home that aggravated an old injury. The singer had to undergo surgery. Ozzy or Osbourne also had about a, a, a bout with pneumonia and called several concerts due to health reasons. Yeah. Kelly Osborne acknowledged that her father had a difficult 2019, but said that the reports about him being on his deathbed were wildly uh, exaggerated. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, fuck, fuck those in- anonymous insider. Fuck you. Yeah, anonymous so, insider, my fat ass. No, yeah, no, no. I was told that it you. was... Uh, I was told th- th- that this information was from Sharon Osborne herself. And if that's definitely not the case, I am highly disappointed in my news source. I am highly well, disappointed. But I'm happy that this report is wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> TMZ that. reports, uh, Ozzy Osbourne not on my deathbed out and about with Sharon. Oh, he's probably pissed off. <laughs> he's shouting from a car. I'm not <laughs> dead yet. I ain't dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what i would expect him to do that's awesome i don't know i i just see a video of like it's sharon being like hello and like you see from like the shotgun side because ozzy doesn't have his license anymore uh like in like kind of he doesn't have his license his anymore no there was a story i heard like oh i want to say like sometime last year i think it was sometime when i was in seattle that ozzy osbourne has gone most of his life not needing a uh license but he won he at some point i want to say in like 2017 2018 sometime recently actually got his license and then six months later lost it because he just did renew it or he got into an accident or something or whatever oh. so he's back to being chauffeured around again so it's like all right cool that's okay right. him and sharon are like one of the wealthiest couples in the uk so they can afford a chauffeur oh fuck yeah right or she can just drive herself she's a She's still an active, uh, uh, energetic lady. I believe they. I believe they live in. I think their primary residence is in Beverly Hills. I. I that's know. an area. That's an area where I would not want to drive myself, and I refuse to drive myself while in New York. I'm not driving in Beverly Hills. Oh, but Kay, you have to drive up and down Sunset. It's absolutely <laughs> divine, my dear. I had brunch with my sister when I was in L.A. the other day. Oh, the pancakes, the crepes, the souffles. Mm. <laughs> I could not do that. Actually, I didn't I, want to drive myself have... when I went to Baltimore last year, but I did anyway. <laughs> I wanted to hire a chauffeur for Baltimore, and I, I texted you, or I messaged you that, remember? I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, dude, why don't you just fly? It's like, no, it's like, it's not even that far away. I'm like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I was like, it's like a few hours away, but I was like, do I really, do I really, really, really want to drive? I was like, because I mean, I mean, it's like I could, I could afford to pay a chauffeur, but I was like, but I don't want to spend that much money. So I, I was just like, whatever. I'll just, I'll just drive myself and get over it. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Baltimore traffic in the Inner Harbor is not that bad. It's not. Uh, no. It's I, not. I would love to drive around Baltimore. I mean, I, I get to ride with my cousin whenever he picks me up and we go hit the bars and whatnot. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, I wish I could drive in this area. It looks so fun. The next time we do a convention, wherever it may be, I'll, uh, I'll invite you. Yeah. No, and I you can, can drive. You can drive around because I don't like driving. So you can drive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just uh, get a rental car or I'll just toss you my keys or whatever. Exactly. It's not uh, like I. It's not like I drive an expensive car. No, 
I, I drive a crappy car, so you can, I'll just toss you the keys, and you can drive my, my car around. <laughs> uh, Ozzy Osbourne is, uh, resides in Hidden Hills, California. Hidden Hills. That is in the Calabasas area, uh, just outside of Agora Hills. Cool. I drove by it on my way to go visit my buddy in Thousand Oaks. Cool, cool. Always wanted to try living in Las Vegas, like in the suburbs. I think that'd be kind of nice. Yeah, you know. Spiders are uh, big out there, though. Yeah. But yeah, but big spiders can't get in your house. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Thought experiment, thought experiment. Would you rather <clears throat> have spiders continue where they're at right now, or would you rather have spiders the size of cats? Definitely where they are right now. I can deal with that. But think of it this way. If you had big giant spiders the size of cats, there'd be less of them because they wouldn't be able to repopulate as uh, feverishly and potently. And if they were the size of cats, you'd be able to see them coming. And also, they'd be harder to sneak into your house. I have arachnophobia. I get I get freaked out if I see a spider the size of a quarter. Okay, well, never mind. <laughs> I have arachnophobia, brother. If, if I see a spider that's the size of a quarter, I, I have to have somebody come kill it. All right. Well, then... Well, actually, uh, I do have a, I have a baseball bat I use for that, too. So. Oh, well, okay. I'm not, wait, wait, wait. I'm not exaggerating. I literally have an aluminum baseball bat that I use to kill spiders. Do you have tile floors? Concrete. Okay. I, I'd so be concerned. I, have con- just- I live in a I have a, I live in a basement, so I have concrete floors and walls. So the baseball bat just bounces off. Okay, because I was like, I just imagine you be like, ah, spider king. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's off concrete, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, thought experiment number two, and this is something that okay. I'm actually stealing from a uh, YouTube channel that I am quite uh, fond of. Um, you are walking through the woods, and you come across a man, a regular-sized man, trapped in a large glass jar. What do you do? Ooh. So, walking through the woods, and I stumble across a regular-sized guy trapped in a giant glass jar. Like, it's uh, like imagine like a, a, a jam jar or something like that. It's got okay. like the big, typical metal lid and whatnot. Well, uh, probably assuming he could hear me and I could hear him, I'd probably ask him. What you the can't hell happened. hear him. Ooh, I would probably try to motion to the glass or to the lid to see if he wants it out. Uh huh. So if okay. he, so I would motion to the lid or to the glass because I don't know if I would be able to take that giant ass lid off. So I'd have to break the glass with something. Hmm. So. If he if he did gesture that he wanted out, I would probably try to get the lid off. If I couldn't, I would probably yeah. call somebody because I wouldn't want to break the glass. I would probably because I don't want to injure myself or the guy inside. So I would probably call like emergency services, and be like, "There's a guy stuck in a jar." And after they, after I convince them I'm not on crack, then I would let them deal with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that That is interesting, and I will take that into account. I will send it off to the proper individuals. Yay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but enough about thought experiments. You know what I want to talk about? What? Movies! No, I, I honestly I don't have any movies. <laughs> I enjoy thought experiments, though. <laughs> <That was fun. laughs> I don't that know was if it was fun. so much of a thought experiment as it is just a uh, random-ass riddle that I thought of. Or not no, that I, I thought, thought of, right. but that I... Uh, that oh. I've heard and would god, my nose. pose oh. to you. Right. Oh god, my nose is still giving me hell. Alright. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, I'll have to try to get that store painted. Uh, it wasn't out there today because we have snow, and the, so snow. the roads were bad. Snow. Snow. Can't go too long. <laughs> <laughs> yes! I love that movie. Oh, it's so fucking good. I know, right? Very, White very Christmas, young, for those of you who don't know. White for those Christmas. youngins who are unlearned. And I, I, I love that film, Miss Grace. Saw that for the first time when I was in high school. I was like, music appreciation or whatever. And he showed us the movie. Loved it. Great. 
So uh, yeah, we so the roads were like really shitty today. So I didn't uh, I didn't bother going out. And plus, I have this sinus thing anyway. So I figured maybe paint fumes wouldn't be the best thing to inhale. No, it's like horseradish or uh, Worcestershire sauce. It just oh oh god oh yeah, I'm cleaned out now. <laughs> All right. That's how paint fumes work. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll have to get my friend up there to help me uh, finish the job. Sir. Oh, God. Uh, Kay, you want to tell me what you're doing inside that store? Sir. Finishing oh. his coat. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, the guy that owns the store, he lives, like, really far away from me, right? Okay. So, uh... So he he doesn't get to come down here very often to help me out, so I pretty much have to do it by myself, right? No big deal. I agree to this. So I signed the paperwork. I know what I got myself into. <laughs> oh god. If only I did. So <laughs> so he sent this one guy down, right? And he was helping me out. He was fine, whatever. He was helping me do things. Mm-hmm. And uh so apparently it, I, so I, I leave, right? I, I leave because I had to go do something else. And he's there at nighttime doing things. And uh, apparently I, I apparently a cop thought that he was potentially stealing the TV that we have set up at the store. Yeah. I get a text from, from the owner saying, hey, I'll just call him Phil. Hey, Phil almost got arrested. I'm like, what the hell happened? <laughs> he's like, apparently a cop... Uh, Saw him messing with the TV. I guess he was still setting it up. And the uh-huh. cop walked in. He's like, what are you doing? Are you stealing? Why, and no, officer. That's really stupid. Like, are you stealing? Yes. Yes, officer. Yes. I am. St- yeah. Congratulations. With that one single question, you have caught me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Tell officer. Tell wins, Johnny. <laughs> so, and what the... Uh, and apparently he thought it was really strange because he was like, and I was talking to Phil himself, and he told me the story again. He was like, and you want to know what the real weird thing is? And I'm like, what was weird about it? He was like, it was a state cop, too. It wasn't even local. And I was like, well, that makes sense. He's like, what do you mean? We don't have a local police here. We don't have a local police force. It's all state. It, one of the cities that are around where I live uh, called Mesa, Arizona. A lot of people have heard of it. Maybe you have. I don't know. Anyway, but there's a point off to the far east of the town are a lot of what they call county islands, where technically within a a, a quarter mile square area is not the city, but inside of it is technically supposed to be the next city over, but there is no next city over, so it's just no city. So it's in theory policed and first responded by sort of the state but not really or the the county i think in theory the maricopa county is the uh first responders that apply to these uh county islands not necessarily uh mesa police or uh, firefighters or ambulance and it's really interesting how like that's the case. It's people that are like, hey, Mesa would love to annex you. And the people that were living there were like, fuck off. I was like in a little bit of a, I was in a little bit of a trance trying to get my nose unplugged again for like the 50th time. And all of a sudden I heard fuck off and I'm like, what, 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 eh, eh? <laughs> But I get you, I well, get I'm you. Glad I, I can, I, <laughs> I'm glad I that I can know. have this conversation with the people at home. <laughs> I, 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 I hear you, though. You know, it's, uh, it's policed by the uh, first responders. So that's that's interesting. It's quite interesting. Yeah. I, I hear a siren in the background. Yep. <laughs> and also the damn dog across the street. So thank you so very much. Oh, that's all right. So, all right. So I think we had a very good episode today. Unless you have anything to add, I think we should wrap it up. Do you have anything to add? I don't. A reminder that people can always tweet at the show, at the maybe pile. Uh, let me actually just wait. Hold on. Actually, uh, let me verify this real quick. Hold double check. Waiting. Uh, hold on. It's not on my phone. I don't have the maybe pile on my phone. Hold on. I got this. Okay. You can also follow us on Twitter individually, at Kiryoku Writes and at M- Mummified Tony. Oh, oh, are we finally giving that out now, Kay? Are you finally okay with people knowing your Twitter account? Uh. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. If they want it bad enough, they're going to find it anyway. So I may as well just give it. 
if they want it bad enough, they're gonna find it. So nice. if you want it, if you want any questions, just hashtag uh, ask the maybe pile. That is, in fact, the hashtag. I know that for a fact. Yes. So hashtag ask the baby pile. If you have a question for us, just send it through there. I'm always looking through the hash. You know, I'm always looking through and seeing if there's anything new. So please at, give us something to look for. The Twitter is at maybe pile pod. That's maybe pile p o d, all one word as handles go. And yes, it is hashtag ask the maybe pile. Yeet. <laughs> Yeet indeed. Uh, right. So yeah, I, I think that's about it for me. Um, wait, Actually, what am I doing the outro for? This is your job. Fuck off. I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so I'm going to go and try to nurse the stupid sinus infection or cold. So hopefully I'll be, uh, hopefully I'll be able to keep the energy that I had at the beginning of this episode for the entirety of the next episode. Because hopefully my uh, nose will not be, you know, full. So, I will see everybody later. Thank you so much for uh, listening to us, our, our, our ramblings. Me and Tony really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who's listening. And uh, have a good one. Bye-bye. For Rohan! The guy who owns the store, he lives in New Jersey, so he's like really far away from me. I'm so sorry. So, yeah, so he like lives really far away. From- Damn it! <laughs> so.